next mystery that we enter is the mystery of Corpus Christi, the celebration of the most holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I will give emphasis to Corpus Christi as such. Uh, I will not enter too much into the technicalities of explaining all about body and blood of Christ. We keep in mind that in Jewish tradition, the way they understand body and blood of Christ is, is one. All right, now, the body in terms of living, uh, living out uh, day to day, the blood in terms of that which gives life, the two of them are, are together always, body and blood, the fullness of a person. And then later on, if we, we may add our Christian tradition, spirit. That is why we, when we greet one another, uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we say, and with your spirit. Why do we say, and with your spirit? That is a statement also, understanding from those days already, the fullness of this person is found with the spirit, the spirit of the person, because the spirit of the person is not just of the human spirit, but also this with the spirit and in the spirit of God. There is the body and the blood, the spirit, the love of God. All of that put together, my dear friends, all of that already. Remember about the mystery of the Holy Trinity. We have the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and there the Spirit, the communion of the Spirit, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The term that I've been using, the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is none other than communion. By communion, it enables the gift of being in God. So we have here now our readings on the feast of the most holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Moses said to the people, remember how for 40, 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes from the forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought you forth, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. From the book of Deuteronomy. Interestingly, my dear friends, it comes across to me now uh, already because we're talking about the feast of the body of Christ, body and blood of Christ, and of course, for us, uh, the Holy Eucharist, the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist is very much so the feast of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it crosses my mind immediately now after reading this. Uh, remember how in the second Eucharistic prayer, the priest, Epiclesis, I put my hands over the body and blood or the bread and the wine. I say, come down, Lord like the dew fall or the do fall, to be more precise. I have to correct myself, my English as well. Huh? Send forth down your spirit, like the do fall. Ah, the do fall. That is taken from the experience of the people, of the chosen people, when they were crossing the desert. Imagine here for 40 years, I'll come back to that, in the desert, 
end, they had nothing to eat. And then in the morning, the dew fall. From that dew fall, manna. And that manna was the bread that they eat to remind them the hungers of the body, but at the same time also not reminding them of the hungers of their heart or who they are following, the spirit of why they are crossing the desert. Uh, it reminds me also, my dear friends, remember how people speak about dryness in prayer. Oh, I'm experiencing a form of dryness now in my life. Look, uh, our first reading from Deuteronomy telling us, reminding us, Moses reminding the people, remember how you crossed the desert for 40 years. 40 years of dryness, my dear friends. And some of us, when they come to me and they com quote unquote, complain that they are experiencing dryness in their prayer period. One prayer period, two prayer periods, three prayer periods. We're talking about 40 years in the desert, my dear friends. Dryness in the desert for 40 years. And you, what dryness are you experiencing? Ah, let's extend that dryness. What hunger are you experiencing? Ah, yes, it reminds us also of Jesus Christ, His own testing, His own temptation, His own fasting for 40 days in a deserted place. And that is the time where he came to a resolute and fundamental decision that I am about my father's business. And here, the whole questioning during this dryness, what do you seek? What do you decide to hunger for? What do you decide in terms of asking the Lord to be gifted with. It's all there, all of the themes being reminded. And it, Moses tells them, remember how for 40 years, 40 years now, the Lord your God has directed all your journey. But in the end, reminding us all throughout, it is a desert experience for 40 years, but the Lord was directing your journey. The Lord was with you. And there, there is the hunger of the body. They are fed with mana. But part of the remembering there, being told, you do not live by that bread alone. And we have to remember as well their experience. They were hungry crossing that desert and they were being fed with manna. Interestingly enough, my dear friends, we can see here, despite all of that experience, People still search for more, is it not? Correct? What is it that we search for more? After eating the manna, they are reminded by Moses that you do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. That is their experience already, even of that time. Now, some of you might be looking for, Father, show us some applications that we have even in our time now. Goodness gracious, my dear friends, that is your task. Can you imagine crossing a desert for 40 years and being hungry? And you now, what is your experience? And can you see that through? And not only seeing it through, but 
can you see God directing your journey in the desert experience? Let me add already, there is also that part of being given from time to time to quench that bodily hang hunger with the mana, with that which is of God, with that which God feeds you, with that which God chooses to feed you. It is His choice. I will feed you with the mana. Of course, I am already projecting later on what that bread will be, what that mana will be. See how we are directed already by our first reading and the first statement that is used. Remember, rather, the first word, remember, that is a loaded word the Old Testament into the New Testament. Remember. Our second reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Cling, cling, cling. You should ring a bell, right, my dear friends? If the last reflections that we had on the Trinity, we were reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, about the greeting, how everything already is in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And here we take from the first letter of the Corinthians, St. Paul writes, The cup of blessing that we bless, is it, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we though many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. Now, let's not get caught up in all, all of the technicalities of the words, my dear friends because we have here already uh, the cup of blessing, the blood, the bread we break, the body, and then the loaf of bread. And then people might want to get into the technicality. So uh, what does the bread, loaf, blood partake and all of that, the different words. I won't go into all of the Greek of all of that, my dear friends, because uh, once again, it's all too brief and all too compact what I'm doing. And there can be a lot of, uh, shall we say, interpretations that may come in and we have to be careful. But the stress that we would like to show here is the fact that Paul is already talking about the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And I have mentioned that when we are talking about body and blood, we are talking about the wholeness of the person the fullness of the person, the completeness of the person, and not just of the person now, because it is Jesus Christ, it is of God, that it is of God and from God, and that God is the one who, quote-unquote, teaches us that it is His body that, is, that He offers in sacrifice, that it is God also who teaches us that it is his blood that is shed and by that body and blood that is sacrificed and that is shed it is there that we have the death of, rest of Jesus Christ and from that death Jesus Christ is already offering us a new life a new creation all right I'm using Johannine terms there new life new creation and perhaps I'm uh, bringing in now uh, Pauline terms. And in Pauline terms, he is teaching us about the Holy Spirit as well. Spirit, prayer, new form of life. And that is what we have here also in Pauline terms. That when he speaks of 
the body and blood of Christ and we are able to partake of it, we are able to partake of it because of the Spirit, because of the Holy Spirit. By the gift of the Holy Spirit, if Christ has died in us, Christ will gift us the Holy Spirit and therefore Christ lives in us by the Holy Spirit. Pauline terms, stay with me please. All of this is a whole lot of theology behind the differences of Johannine and Pauline uh, understanding the Holy Spirit. And I just gave tidbits of, of what the Spirit is all about in Pauline terms. But what would be important for us is still picking up from this, my dear friends, is the fact that Paul tells us that we partake of it. We become a part of it to become what we receive. We receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the form of the bread and the wine. And when we receive that, we become, quote unquote, the body of Christ. Now be careful here. It's not to say that, oh, now that I have received the body of Christ, I am the body of Christ now. No, no please, let's, let's not reduce it into those terms. We have to keep in mind, my dear friends, Paul also speaks in spi spirit terms, which means fellowship terms, communion terms. Union, communion, holy communion. When we receive the body of Christ, it is not just one person, but many of those who believe in Jesus Christ receive the body of Christ. And now in communion, as we are receiving the body of Christ, we become a part of the body of Christ. I say a part because that congregation that receives is but one of the many congregations that's been received that receives the body of Christ today in Holy Communion or on Sunday the body Corpus Christi Sunday there are millions who will receive all over all of us become the body of Christ ah I would like to add also they've been receiving the body of Christ since the time when Jesus Christ sat at table, recli rather reclined with his disciples and said, this is my body, this is my blood. Whenever you do this, celebrating this meal, you do it in remembrance of me. And since then, they have been, they have become, they are the body of Christ. Interesting, and means when we receive now and remember what Jesus did and we are doing this because he said to remember him, every time we do it, we remember him, we are becoming the body of Christ. We are, quote unquote, entering the body of Christ. We are participating in the body of Christ. We are in the body of Christ from the time until now, from when he suffered, died, and rose from the dead until now. Oh, interestingly enough, if that is the case too, Father, are you saying that when we celebrate the Holy Eucharist and becoming the body of Christ, we are celebrating with all the saints? from even that time? Oh yes, we are. We are. And that is part of the mystery. And I bring that word into our reflections again. Can be incomprehensible, but yes, we are entering, we are in that mystery, we become part of that mystery. We are the, in the body. Let me use that preposition in the body of Christ when we receive the body and blood of Christ at the celebration. 
and we are participating in that body of Christ that is and has been and will be in Christ because He Himself said so, to do this in memory of Him. We are remembering, and by remembering, we are receiving the graces that they received then, now, and with them then and now, and into the future as well. Ah, that's a lot, my dear friends, is it not? I'm saying a lot already, even from just our second reading from the last, first letter of the Corinthians, of Paul to the Corinthians, that we partake of the body, but when we partake of the body and blood of Christ, we become part of the body of Christ. You are watching ATVN Philippines. Let's move now to our gospel reading. And interestingly enough, my dear friends, we come to the latter part of John chapter 6 for Corpus Christi. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living, living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this, this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, Whoever eats this bread will live forever. All right, uh, another gospel reading, another chapter, and the chapter of John 6 is uh, another one of those uh, loaded chapters with a lot. And if we can keep coming back to it, and there will be many things that we will look into, that we can look into and reflect on. I would like to emphasize maybe uh, three, just three, uh, let's keep it to three. If I make two and forget the third, well and good. But the first that I would like to emphasize here, my dear friends, is that of this is the bread that came down from heaven. All right. Um, a little bit of theology of movement is what I would call it here. God from the heavens gave us his only begotten son. So, God's only begotten Son, the Son of God, came down. He came down from heaven. Only God can come down from heaven. That is very important. And then, after coming down from heaven, He did His ministry, life here on earth, all His works, and suffered and died. And if you wish, as per the theology of those days, he went down into Sheol. But death and Sheol and all the evil of the world could not hold on to him. And a great part of his going down there is to conquer this and rose from the dead. And after rising from the dead, my dear friends, he ascends to the Father. He is the bread from heaven that has come down. And that bread died once in his flesh and blood and now never dies again. 
will never die because it is he who is life and gives life, resurrected life and life everlasting, so much so that whoever partakes and eats of this will have life eternal. Reference to mana, remember? Do fall. They ate, but it was not enough. Jesus is the bread of life from heaven. And he suffers, he dies, rises, is risen. Alleluia. And he is the new life. He is the bread of life. He is life everlasting. And whoever partakes of this will not die. Little different, is it not, from what Paul presents us? Here in John, he makes it very clear. He is already pointing to what? This flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, human as it is, because he is God and man, will suffer, will die, but he will rise again. And by his rising, if you believe in that, that is the partaking, that is the receiving, that is the eating of Jesus Christ. Reference to what? The Last Supper, that prophetic gesture of Jesus, that by the eating of the bread that he shares with his disciples, the drinking from the cup that he shares with his disciples, it is his prophetic gesture that he will die. But if you partake of my death, you will be given by me, through me and in me, life everlasting, resurrected life in Jesus Christ. The mystery of the Corpus Christi, my dear friends, is a lot of grace for us at the same time, my dear friends, it is not, how would I put it, something that can be easily digested in one sitting. Food for us to take. We need that food to take. And we have to allow it to digest. The interesting part of this, my dear friends, is if I would just like to end it this way, is that When we partake of our Lord Jesus Christ, we receive Him, quote-unquote, I already used the description, we have to digest. And it is in the, the, the digesting where He will give us life. Likewise, in terms of the comprehension and understanding of a good bit of what I tried to explain, my dear friends, we have to allow it to, allow me to say, percolate. Allow us to think about it. And in the thinking about it, let not only my way of thinking be the performance, the action, but rather allow the Holy Spirit to remind us Allow the remembering of Jesus Christ to work in us. Allow his thoughts to rule us so that we can enter and partake of the mystery of the body of Christ. It is not for me to explain away. It is not for me to come to a full understanding here and now, but rather that I enter into the mystery. When I receive the body of Christ, I become what I receive. And when I become what I receive, the body of Christ, I realize that I am in communion with others who believe in Christ, but I am in communion with the Holy Spirit in the body of Christ. 
And that is a lot, my dear friends. For the here and now, that is how I would reflect with you about it. But there is a great part of it, which is the there and then. That we have to remember that God is directing our journey. And the body of Christ is directing our body towards His Allow him to, allow Jesus Christ to direct us towards the fullness of the body of the only begotten Son of God, Jesus himself.